Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well today. In this video, we're going to be looking at the new Slime Serpent mount that has been discovered very recently. As you probably know, if you've been on Reddit or anything like that, there was a mount found that has been people have been looking for for the last, uh, well, since Shadowlands came out, really. It was data mined early in PTR. We knew it was available, we just didn't know how to get it. Uh, well, people found it yesterday. It is obtained by soloing the last two bosses in a Plaguefall, either heroic or mythic. Um, and then going and playing with a pet snake. Because why not? That makes sense, right? Uh, so I actually recorded from the start of this run, but the first part of the video was really messy, so I didn't bother. Um, effectively, you want to use the normal heroic skip all the way to the third boss, as you can see that I'm doing it now. I'm doing this on heroic at 210 eye level on my pally. Um, there have been multiple different classes that have soloed it. Um, Pally was the easiest one for me. Uh, I'm using the play borers here just to help me kill stuff a little bit quicker. You kind of have to kill some of this trash, unfortunately, so you may as well kill it as easy as possible. Uh, but yeah, so this is really cool from Blizz. I like stuff like this. Um, stuff where you have to go and like find it and earn it and things like that. Um, yeah, so it's, it wasn't particularly hard. There was a couple of things I will say you probably want to do beforehand. So the third boss is a little bit of a uh, survivability check. There's a lot of mechanics that happen all around the same sort of time, and it's a little bit difficult. The fourth boss is a bit more of a DPS race. So we're going to skip all of this here. We don't need to kill any of these mobs or, or the boss. We're going to skip round to the left. And we are going to clear everything before the third boss. Now, the reason for it is you do actually have to do the mechanics. You can't just ignore them. They will just kill you if you, if you ignore them. So... I'm going to run down and kill this trash. This trash was a little bit of a pain in the neck because you're going to get double ambushes uh, and obviously the spidling spawn and things like that. You just got to basically be able to just keep hitting them. Um, I mean, Pally was very, very good choice for this, I think. It's probably one of the easiest tanks, if not the easiest tank to do it. Um, I've heard rumours that Guardian Druids are very easy as well because they get that Convoke on the boss. Um, obviously, be able to DPS it down a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't particularly difficult. I do use a couple of cooldowns, but it's just because why not, basically. Uh, like I said, I'm only 210 eye level, so it's not like I'm incredibly geared for this, or, or mythic level geared or anything like that. So you, if you do want this mount, you should be able to go and get it with any of your tank ults, really. Uh, yeah, so you can kill this trash off really quickly, and, um... When you are killing these, I'd probably focus the defenders uh, before anything else. You should be able to just survive the rest of the trash. The defenders really slow you down with that ball walk. So, yeah. Uh, we kill the brood ambusher, and then we're going to go and kill the other side. So, before you come in, I would try to take as much DPS stuff as possible. Train kits, conduits, things like that. I would also potentially bring some drums, a flask, maybe some potions. It'll all help. It'll speed you up really quickly. Uh, the last boss, the first two phases are actually easier than the last one. Um, so if you bloodlust at like the first phase, if you cool down to the second, you can probably do the last boss very easily. Um, and there's no time limit on this. You can spend as long as you like in here, as long as you don't invite anyone else into the run. As soon as someone else comes into the run, it fails. Um, yeah, so kill all the mobs off. And uh, as you see, I actually did take quite a bit of damage there. So you do have to be a little bit careful. But uh, I wasn't particularly worried that I wasn't going to wipe to the trash. And if you do wipe to any of this, it's not failed. You just come back, try again. Um, the only thing that, like I said, is is the hard requirement is that nobody else comes into the dungeon. Uh, which is quite nice because it means it cannot be boosted. This is purely something that, while it's not very hard, it's, it's not the most impossible achievement ever... It means that you've gone and earned it yourself, which is nice. So this boss has a couple of different mechanics. The first one is the slash, the tank mechanic that would normally be in a run, cryotoxic slash. This can be purged off to reduce the poison damage. I recommend if you are doing this as a pally or a druid, you do purge it off. You also then get the goo on the floor. The goo is something where you just need to run over them, drop an AoE, or if you go into the middle of them, it just does it anyway. Um, and you get the ambushes out. These tend to come during other mechanics, which is a little bit of a pain. The Shadow Ambush would normally be on a DPS or a healer. It never normally goes onto the tank, but because you're on your own, 
the Shadow Ambush goes on you. Well, this is something where you just need to uh, basically go and manage it. Uh, pop a cooldown beforehand or anything like that. I do try to kill the ambushes off as quick as I can. Ultimately, I didn't mind if the boss took me 10 minutes to kill. As long as we killed it. Uh, so, that like I said, the ambushes became a little bit more of a priority with the assassins even. As you can see, using a couple of cooldowns there, you have your cooldowns. Don't just save them for uh, random stuff. As you can see, I actually got stunned there just outside of the assassin. I took so much damage. So I'm going to heal myself back up here. All the assassins survived for a long, long time. So I've got like eight up now. And it did get a little bit messy. So I popped wings. I believe I popped divine toll in a second as well. I did. And I just cleared everything up. Um, this is probably the harder boss out of the two, just because there's so many mechanics coming on around the same time. So again, we've got the stun, we've got the uh, the assassins coming up. Um, in a minute, we're going to get the cryotoxic slash. All at the same sort of time, and they all kind of work against each other. So uh, it was interesting to solo. I really, really enjoyed it. I, like I said, I think Pally is probably the easiest one for this. Blood DK should be able to do this quite easily as well. Um, because you can IBF the stun if you need to, you can AMS the slash and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so we slowly get the stamp, and again, this is 210, I brought none of the things that I mentioned, no flasks, no potions, no drums, nothing like this. Literally just thought, uh, burn it down, not a problem. Um, so you can definitely just brute force it, um, and that's kind of what I did, really. Um, yeah, so... Ah, nothing much to, to, to say. Like I said, it wasn't that hard. It's just a little bit time-consuming. Um, I think it was about three minutes, four minutes to kill it or something like that. Sounds about right, anyway. Um, and boom. So, five minutes. Wow, five minutes, 30 seconds. So actually longer than I thought. Uh, when you clear in the trash here, I would recommend you kill these. If you are Necrolord, maybe go kill the slimes because you get the buff. The buff is really nice. Um, but yeah, I would recommend going to the left, or the right, doesn't matter, but skipping that first pack and just killing the skeletons on their own first, just to make it much easier. You can see, you're going to burn these down now. And the reason you do this is you don't want to engage the actual, um, kind of casting mob down here. Just makes it much harder for no real reason. Um, and if you are running over the sides, make sure you jump, otherwise you'll take damage. So I said, this the whole thing took me about half an hour to do, between obviously skipping everything, doing a little bit of research, um, and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, you'll be able to see in this video where the slime serpent is to do the things after the boss. That sounds very suspicious, does it? They do the things with your slime serpent after the boss. But yeah, so we slowly get Ickert Bile Flesh down, and uh, yeah, so the boss has three phases. Uh, the first and second phase are exactly the same. Boss is going to do uh, Infectious Rain, which you should just be able to ignore. He's going to do a little bit of melee damage, but he's also going to summon adds. These adds drop like a bomb on the floor that you need to soak. If you don't soak it, it does massive damage, and you, you, you want to soak it. The issue is, if you can't kill that before the next one spawns, you need to rotate and kill both, and soak both as well, which you'll see in the video. I will explain it further in a second. So I'm going to go into the boss here. She has 400k health, which isn't that much, really. Um, so, this is the first add. And you see, I actually pop wings here. I want to get a lot of damage out. And I think we kill this one before the next one spawns. But this is the bomb. He drops it on the floor. You need to just stand in it to soak it. Same as you would in a normal heroic run. The difference is, if you get two up at the same time, you need to go and soak both. Now, they'll be on a separate timer. So, you can run to one, soak it, and then run to the second one. So, you see, I've got the second add up now. I immediately run straight round and soak it. You never want to let one of these go off without soaking it. From my experience, it'll do a lot of damage, if not probably cause you to wipe. So I got really lucky here. here. The second one spawned right next to it, so I managed to jump straight in and soak that one as well. They're not always like this. Sometimes they can spawn on two different sides. Be wary if you do run across the puddle. You can get the debuff that does a lot of damage. Now, you want to try to focus on the spawns as much as possible and cleave the boss down the boss boss phase is around 66 percent so if you can burn her to 66 percent so you can see here i've got two up so i soak the first one soak the second one and i'm going to try and kill the first one off soak it soak it and then we kill this first one now luckily the boss just phased and 
during this you don't have to really worry about it much at all and then just run around avoid the tentacles um, another little interesting note for those that you don't know if you stand in the middle at any point you can see just then i actually stood in the middle when one of the tentacles landed it hits you just because you're not actually stood in the tentacle if you are stood in the pool you'll take damages if you were stood in the tentacle which is something to be aware of so we managed to burn down the first one again and i just wanted to phase the boss now i just wanted to get the boss down as quickly as i could one of the spawns goes off and we uh like i said We've still got a couple of cooldowns up. We've still got the trinket up. So we're going to try and burn it down as quick as possible. And as long as you can keep it, as long as you have enough DPS to keep only one spawn up at a time, you should never really have too much of an issue here. Now, I actually forgot at this point that I was hitting the wrong target. And I, I've now got both up. So I'm going to soak the first one, straight back soak the second one. We had to run back to be ready to soak the uh, the, the new one again. So, uh, yeah, it was a little bit messy, but uh, we managed to recover it. The boss has taken a lot of damage, actually, in me being able to focus him for a minute. Uh, so, I believe the boss is on about 35%. At 33, roughly, the boss fades. And the last phase is a complete joke compared to the rest of it. Uh, so, the last boss, these spawns don't spawn at all, ironically. Um, the only difference is you have to deal with the tentacles while killing the boss. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's only you, and you can take one or two of these tentacles if, if you must. And this is pretty much it. So you go through, burn the last uh, couple of seconds of the boss fight. Um, and again, at this point, it was pretty easy. And good luck on your loot as well. Maybe you get your pox storm. So I'd be interested to try this on Mythic to see if it's how hard it is. There's no benefit really to doing it on Mythic over Heroic. So if you are just going for the mount, I would say do it on Heroic. Uh, but yeah, so we get the boss down. And as soon as we get the boss down, we're going to loot and we're going to run straight outside. I'm going to go upstairs and I'd already actually done a little exploration to the things already marked what you want to be looking for is a curious slime serpent now it tells you to pet it i actually slash pet it it didn't work you have to actually go and interact with it and you'll pet it you will be stood in the slime for this so just be careful you don't take too much damage and boom we get the mount so we get the mount it looks pretty cool let's just go back to that one there so like i said you pet it it'll be go straight into your um collections and boom so it looks pretty cool it's a really nice mount and well i say it's a really nice mount it looks pretty cool at least it's, it's probably not one i'll use all the time uh but it's nice to have so i hope you guys have enjoyed i hope you guys use this and go and get your own slime serpents let me know how you find your runs and apart from that thanks for coming thanks for watching have a good day and catch you later goodbye guys